from a special moment for Malvin. 150 in what can only be described as a club legend, and he's still got much, much more to come. Malvin! Malvin! So, Anthony Malvin, thanks for your time. First of all, 150 goals for Kids Grove Athletic. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels good. I um, said last week um, yeah, to score 150 goals at any level for, for any team is a, is a good achievement. And yes, especially with uh, getting a hat trick for mm. it as well, I think it was probably the perfect perfect way to do it. I mean, normally, and as winning the game as well, yeah. if you get it and you score it and you, you've lost or something like that, it doesn't mean as much. But to get a hat trick and just to win is probably the perfect way, really. Yeah. When you joined the club back in 2014, was it something you ever considered doing uh, back then? Not really, no. I think it was, uh, I've said in other interviews and all that before, I think it was just about getting, just trying my love for football again, whether I wanted to carry on. That was that was the make or break for me, really. Um, I said it in other interviews and yet, it, and you know, uh, six years, five years later, wherever it is, I'm still, I'm here now doing an interview with you still, so yeah. Yeah, no. just looking at that Chase Town game, how important was those three points uh, and how important is it going to be in the context of this season? I know we're only early days. Yeah, I think it was massive. Um, you know, we had a good start. I mean, you look at the teams that we've played during, I mean, the start of the season, it's a very tough start. Mm. Stocksbridge away is always a tough place to go to. I don't think we've won very many there. Well, I haven't personally. Yeah. I know the team did last season, but I didn't play. But I personally haven't won there, I don't think. Um, then you get Leek, who, who won the league basically last season. Uh, then chase down away on it's on a Tuesday. It's it was a very tough start. So to get nine points out of that was before the game. It's been truthful. You probably might you took six, seven points, but to get nine, it was it was perfect. Yeah, and not even just those league games. You obviously chased down in the FA Cup. And Cambridge and six, Cambridge City away was a tough game, and to go there and put in that performance, especially the second half, was quite impressive. Oh yeah, massively. I think um, especially that Cambridge game. Anyone who was actually there and watched just. <laughs> will not understand how we were losing 2-0 at our time. I take responsibility, I missed the penalty. Glad, kind of glad, <laughs> you know. Kind of glad I missed the penalty with everything that happened after afterwards. But, yeah, it was uh, it was good and you got on this team. I mean, you saw Saturday against Glossop, sorry. I know I'm jumping ahead a bit, but yeah. we didn't really particularly play well at all again. But we grind a point out away from home and you'd, you'd take it. Yeah, and taking the point there and uh, Glossop, as you say, on Saturday, so it's all building up nicely. For uh, this main run into the now season, yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel it. I think it is it for the next three, four weeks. We're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. It's tight. It's going to be tired on the legs, especially with having so long off. Everybody and getting into that um, that rhythm again of playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. It, it is tough, and it and it's going to be. But at the end of the day, I'd rather do that than be running on the football pitch with uh, with Box shouting there uh, and doing laps. So yeah, <laughs> I'd rather be playing. Yeah, we'll get on to the uh, new current management team. Uh, in the moment, particularly with Scott scoring uh, 53 goals in one season. When when you get the hat trick, uh, obviously, goals 1-2, does it go through your mind what the record is and how close you are to it? Not really, no, not really. Um, to be honest, uh, it's going to sit there and sound, I don't know, how can I say it? Uh, if it happens, it happens. Yeah. If it didn't, it didn't. It, 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 you know, things like that just, just go over my head, really. I'm not bothered about scoring scoring 89 goals in a season <laughs> well, I, well I say I'm not bad but it, it's not sit there I wouldn't sit there now and tell you you know I'm going after that 53 fit no that's that's not true at all my first aim will always be 20 once I get 20 then you go from there and that's any forward that's any centre forward but if I get to but also as well you have to sit there and realise that if I get 20 goals a season we do mid, and we finish mid table pointless and yeah. which is I'll go back to it about selling horrible that's probably been the previous four or five years with us it's been good to get these 150, but I'd say I'd swap all the goals for us to have a playoff, to be in the playoffs. Yeah, and when the ball hits the back of the net and it's the hat trick and the 150, does it go through your mind then, or is it just carry on, let's get this game won? Just carry on, get the game won, three points. Um, that, that, that's it again. I, I'm going to be very modest, and people say, Oh, he's lying. I'm not lying. I was just happy for the three points. I was buzzing to score, don't get me wrong, but three points are more important. You can be a centre forward, score a hat trick. Lose four three. Does that hat trick mean anything? Mm. Of course it doesn't. It means nothing if you haven't got the points. But getting the points was uh, was why it was even more special. So three points, hat trick, one fifty, perfect game really. Yeah, let's take you back to 2014. I believe it was when you joined. You were with Kidderminster. Should have been in the football league. You could have been a football league player, but then things happen. You've obviously spoke about in the past, and you come to 
Kids group. Why kids group of all the local teams? You've been at Lee, you've been at Newcastle. Yeah, uh, Wardy, I've said it before and over here. Uh, down to Pete Ward at the end of the day, the way the way he speaks, speaks to me every day. I, I just got on with him and he just made I just thought if there was one guy I'm gonna start playing football again or try to and hopefully enjoy it be under him and best thing I ever did really. Um I've have a look back, end up then getting closer to Coops, but it was uh, more so for Pete Ward than anybody. Yeah, and just mentioning your relationship with Ian Cooper there, you obviously work for him now, so that must be pleasing that you've got a, such a secure job and it ties lovely in with your football. Yeah, it is, but he's lazy. He's a lazy guy <laughs> working for, you know, he lets me, me and Butch do everything, so he, it's uh, frustrating as well because he'll just be on his phone in his van and then uh, Jan will come out kicking off at us saying I'll do anything, but it's really her husband, so I'll let you know that there. <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a useless boss. No, I'm really joking. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's nice, it's nice to work for a mate though, because you get obviously sometimes people go work and they hate going work because of who they work for and all that. And I haven't got that pressure. And I think it's what I needed at the time uh, with how everything everything was going on um, in my life. Then all of a sudden, like I say, you end up don't looking back, and that's he's part of the reason. Well, he's the main reason I've stayed. So it's that it's that simple. Yeah. When you joined the club uh, that first season. You got seven goals, I believe, in your first season, which is your lowest spell, and seven still. Well, yeah, back. I joined at Crefin, played my first game till Christmas, um, around Christmas time when I played, and I didn't have a full. Listen, I'm not going to stand here, mate. I didn't have a full season. I hardly played. I was not, not. I'm going to sit there and say I'd, I'd missed so long in football. I hadn't played for God knows how long. So coming back then, I was just. Just went through all these injuries because I, again I just come into it. I played four games at Staley Bridge, didn't want to be there, so I never trained, never went. Played for played for Wardy, didn't train at first. Um, just played the game at Chase Town, and then I, I, I don't I think I hardly hardly played much after that. And when I did, I played on the wing for the start of it because we had Kingsley and Dave Walker as well. Um, it wasn't something where I'd be sitting there and wanting. I was again, I'm not going to sound horrible. I, I was played for Wardy because I wanted to play for him, but. I don't think football for me then was the be all and end all. It was just go out there, pick up a wage at first because I didn't have a job as well. He didn't have a job at the time working for Cuba, didn't work for him, pick up a wage and that, that was it, just go home. And that's how my life was at that moment go home, live with my mum, go in my bedroom, be on my own. Just that, that. So football wasn't a matter for me. So that's why I wasn't really bothered then when I, whether I was going to play or not. And the seven goals is, I'm surprised I scored that many, to be honest. <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah, you want a penalty on that? Uh, your debut at Chase Town, so that must be pleasing to have straight away contributed to the team. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, again, but probably how it was if it was a season after, I'd have been stepping up and mm. grabbing that ball, wanting to take the penalty. And it, uh, again, it just without sounding, oh, it just shows you what my mentality towards football was at that point. Then the season after, it all kind of clicked in and changed for me. Yeah, so it clicked in the 48, 42 goals in total, 28 in the league. Uh, that must be pleasing. Joint top scorer as well. It's really started going there for you. Yeah, very happy. Yeah, I don't think we finished highly as well, which was a real shame because I believe that was probably one of the best sides I've played in in terms of even though it was probably one of the lowest we finished because it was it was a real fast flowing team that we had. George Johnsons, um, uh, Nick Wallachie, we had all them players, and it was a really really good side. It was an enjoyable time to play under, even though we didn't do the best in the league. But it was an enjoyable season personally. Um, End up getting those you know, people at Lewis Bean coming in that he come on loan from Vale, so then it was E and L, and it was a really enjoyable time. Not just for the goals as well, it was just about everything that was at the club, and I, I was I'm gutted really that that year we didn't finish as that like higher than we did because I mean the goals, I mean some of that got like the play that year was unbelievable. Yeah, forty two goals, that's amazing for any striker, mm. let alone yourself. How how do you especially, get especially for and 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 in terms of the team. Where we finished yeah. and how, how it all went went about and all that, I, I think um, it was a, you know, it's the level it was at because there, there was sides back then. There was people like Stafford Rangers, Shaw Lane, the, the base. The, the, the league was so strong. Like I'm not saying it's not now, but back then it was so strong. Um, so to get that many goals in the team that we like, the league that it was is uh, probably the most pleasing point of it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you put down to being able to? Get so many, obviously sheer hard work, because it doesn't come with uh, luck scoring 42. Yeah, it, it, it's just, again, it's just about probably being in the right place at the right time, the different player back then, picking the ball, mm -hmm. running at players, and over time you, you adapt as of what I am now. And it was just enjoyable. Like, say, playing for Pete Ward, he made me feel like I was I was worth millions. So when you've mm -hmm. got that manager that continuously backs you up, no matter what happens, 
rings every day, sees how your family are. You're gonna you're gonna put your best performances in for them type of people, and that's 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 how it was with him. And I I love playing under him. I think you mentioned in the past that Nick Wellacoon managed to actually with quite a lot of uh, goals and what have you. How much do you put down to his performances? Yeah, brilliant. It was it was it was me, like one of my best partnerships you know, because of the, the sheer fact that we just worked well together. Mm. It wasn't one of them that was going to take time. It just clicked straight away, and he took a lot of knocks for me. Um, a hell of a lot of knocks and I'll never forget it and I just he was just a great bloke though as well I think I put it down to there was not one selfish bone in his body where strikers are selfish and there was not one selfish bone in his body that I come across when I played with him and that was a, probably the reason why it was so enjoyable to, to do it and I give him a lot of credit I mean I give him some of the highest praise in terms of being like my best strike partner I've had of all the players I've played with I think that's a very very high praise that if you had that sort of similar player now in the uh, team you would be able to hit 40 odd goals again? I don't know, it's all to change, bodies changed, um, the game's changed. I mean, I don't forget, I had Chris Budridge the year we did all well, um, who again ended up getting 32. He took a lot of knocks and big boots. So I, I think I like playing with big big guys because mm. I can I can do my thing that I want to do, whereas other seasons I haven't, haven't had that, but I've still scored a, a lot of goals. So, it, 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 yeah, I know what you're saying, but. Just enjoy, just enjoy being out on the pitch. Now you get getting older, getting, you know, getting more tired after every game, getting more knocks, more bumps. Whereas before, when you were, when I was 22, 23, 24, play every day of the week. <laughs> now it's a, it's a struggle playing Saturday, Tuesday now. But it's I'm still it's just it's just one of them. You've played with some great strikers, not just Nick here. Michael Gashamari, Morgan Smith, Nathan Pesic, yeah. just Frick, Kidderminster. Where do you rank? Uh, Nick to compare to those sort of players? Well, it, again, it's tough in terms of because the level you play, at the end of the day, I played with them in the highest level in non league. School goals, yeah. And probably one of the best sides of conference you've seen that didn't, unfortunately, didn't go up, you know. Um, and I like, and that, that time again was probably one of the best times in my life in football because that team was unbelievable. I mean, like I say, it's in terms of partnership, yeah, he's up there. And again, don't forget Michael Gash, when the year I did. Did score them goals. He yeah. come the back end to play the last ten. So all that season, I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't play. Uh, play with him. So that's probably why I've gone for. Uh, yeah, Nick, yeah. Nick, yeah, definitely. But Amari Morgan Smith, what a player he was as well. What a player. He was a good player. You know, okay, but, but yeah, I played with loads. Yeah. Joe Lolly, Marvin Johnson. There's some some names. You know that you can sit there and say, well, at the end of the day, I'm I'm proud to play with the players I played with. Just going back to that time at Kidderminster, I know we're jumping around a bit. Is that a big regret not taking Kidderminster into the football league? Because you were, what was it, two points away from getting them there and then the playoffs? Possibly, but it wasn't, I, I say it was a regret under the circumstances that how we started. Maybe if we started like that, would we have finished the way we did? We'll never know. Still do what we did, even though we did, you don't win a game in, in your first 10 is an absolutely unbelievable achievement. And at the end of the day, nobody can take away what happened that year. I got in conference team of the year with with players who are playing in the Premier League now. You know, <laughs> nobody can ever, no matter what stick I get or what people can say, mm. there's not one person in that world that can take stuff like that away from me. And so, I've, I've you know I've been at the highest level of non-league and I've done well for myself. Yeah. Did you ever feel like you wanted to go back to that highest level? I believe uh, Nantwich tried to come in for you in the past. There was only one team I ever would have gone back for. That would have been if Kidderminster ever come back in. Yeah. There was never an interest of ever anybody else. I probably sat there and when I when I was angry, you know, I said, oh, I won't leave. I mean, there, there was nothing ever close. Um, if there was one side that would ever, ever, um, ever have come, it would have been them. There has been clubs in the conference who had come, which I don't need to ever talk about or reveal to that be between me and the club and them and like it was just ne never interested so I've had the chances I just never wanted to do it. Yeah I'm just finally on the kid Mr. Point. I know quite a few of the fans when we announced on Tuesday that that was your 150th goal for the club they were like I'll come back over to Kidderminster so is it mainly because of the fans there? Well yeah like, like I say it's been what now buddy what six years since yeah. last play for which shows you the type of affection that I that we had with each other. Now. I think it, the thing is with them, they knew whenever I put that shirt on, I give it everything. I was that. I'm one of them players that always gets emotionally involved with with fans because at the end of the day, without fans, it's nothing. Which is a perfect time to say with everything that's yeah. going on with COVID and you see teams like that that can't have fans. Fans are life, but any football club, whether it's at this level or the highest level, you need them in. 
and as much as we've took advantage of it by getting 400 here and, and by the way when you're playing against Leek and you in the grounds the way it is and the atmosphere all, all of a sudden you sit there and then even though we're semi-pro you feel like a football like a football player again because there's people there the atmosphere is good and, it, and there's no better feeling mm. and I think the Kidderminster fans always understood that no matter when I, what happened what day what game no matter who it was I give everything for that football club and I always try to involve them in whatever it is yeah, just quickly mention for the fans here at Kids Grove and all the players the manager past and present have always praised them how important is it for yourself as a player to hear them chanting your name even when you're not having the best of spells potentially yeah it, it's very good um, at the end of the day it, it, it's true what they say I mean you look at the results now in the Premier League mm. some of the results you sit there you're thinking how's that happening look at Sheffield United mm. would they be doing as bad as they're doing if they had their fans in probably not because the fans are, like I've just said the life mm. of the clubs and they do get you they do make you pay play 10, 20, 30 percent better than what you probably have got in your locker because they just give you that extra motivation. So any any anybody, no matter if you get ten or hearing mm. hearing people hearing the shouting, it, it helps and it's massive for players. It really is. And then just moving back onto your career, twenty sixteen seventeen. Uh, a new manager, Pete Ward left, and then Ryan Austin coming. How did that affect you as a player? Mm, not it, yes, I was gutted, mm. really gutted. But I knew Ryan. I was I had a little spot with him at Kidderminster. Yeah. He was local. Um, it was and he was he was a mate. Um, it, so it was it wasn't didn't really affect me much. It was uh, just just see what happens with the side that we had him. We had, a, we had the base of a good squad, we just didn't start very well, um, unfortunately. Uh, I remember his first game, Stafford Rangers in the FA Cup, which I got two and we won 2-1. Um, I think Rob Stevenson scored for them. Um, so it was a perfect start and again I think that was one of them seasons where if we actually probably signed players towards the end of the season where we had a good 11, a very good 11, and we were just probably lacking a little, little bit that could come in and, and shake the place up and change it. Yeah, but it, it was good first year. I, I had no complaints. So. Yeah, and you just mentioned about playing with him at Kidderminster and being a mate. Did that was that important to you? And if you were say a different manager coming in, it might have changed it, or is this just all hypothetical? No, not really. No, not really. I don't think it would have changed anything. I, it was just it was probably now that you was someone you know. Because sometimes the, the thing the thing is with local football, you very rarely get a manager who's out of town who'll come and take the job. Mm. And I think then when you do, I think that's when you start start sitting there and going, oh, hang on a minute, what? Oh, where's he going to get? Does he know players around here? Does that mean he's going to start getting players from outside, outside the area? But with him being local, I don't think that was a problem now. Yeah, and he'd also started the season as a player, so he was someone you knew in the dressing room. Well, he was yeah, he was injured though, wasn't he? He had a little injury, so I don't think he actually played. Um, I don't even remember what his first game was because he missed the first so many, didn't mm. he, with an injury? So, um, and I got injured if I remember rightly as well. I did my ankle. Um, so I missed a couple of games at the beginning of the season. And my first game back was rugby, I believe. And then we played Leek on the on the bank holiday Monday. So he wasn't involved. And then we found out after Leek game that Woody got was uh, getting the sack. So it it, it started off. Now when he come in, it was yeah, it was it was fine. Yeah. And just talking about that FA Cup run, it was a bit of a good run. There you beat Stafford to where. Uh, I think they were at the level above you, well they certainly won that league. They were level above yes, yeah, they've just, just, they just gone up, hadn't they, at the time they yeah. won the league, yeah. So that was quite pleasing to have won that yeah. at that place. Yeah, uh, or did they win the playoffs? They either one anyway, yeah. but um, yeah, it was very good, it was, it, was a very, it was a very good game, I thought we played well. I remember Dave Hartel actually, uh, Dave Hartel and Ash Hodgkinson at the town mm -hmm. played centre, to both of them had, uh, had a really good game, uh, no, Dave, Dave's now crew manager mm -hmm. in the year. Uh, for my second, uh, first goal, sorry, did a really nice dummy overs for me. I managed to score, but yeah, it was we were we played really well, played yeah. really well, and that was I think that was down to them two at the back who who uh, were organisers and uh, made us very hard to beat because we looked good on the counter attack that game. Yeah, did Dave Artel win a penalty as well for the? He did, yes, yeah. he did. So he, so he sat, he had an hand in both goals, and he did, right? Yeah, yeah. he did, yeah. And early he either won the pen, that kind of penalty by the way, yeah. the way it was. Knew what was happening, gone down. The referee's watching. He's turning as he's going yeah. down. That, and that's why he is. That's how he's playing at the levels he's played at, and that's the difference sometimes. And when you look at players at our level, that 
people who come down from above and the, the, it's the tiny little details that they do that show you why they played the levels they played at and it was that them little things for that when he comes so yeah yeah. Definitely. I don't remember that because I actually was working for an agency and that was my very first game for the yeah. agency. So it's funny how it crosses. I never forget he's uh, I never forget how he's going down with but <laughs> you know how he does with his big voice like that. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, brilliant. How important was it for you having someone like David Artel? Well, for the whole team really who's played in the football league. Very intelligent bloke. Very, very into I obviously come at the back end of his mm. career. I think he ended up going joyous for a couple of games mm. after when he left, but it was the back end of his career. But in terms of Football knowledge. I mean, his crew manager now got him promoted, and mm. you knew then that he was going to be something like that. Because whenever you spoke to him, it was just he was that knowledgeable on the game. And you know, I, we were doing quizzes on the on the buzzes, and I made sure I was his partner, and we won every week. I, I had no input in the answers. So he did it all, but I still won. Yeah. And then just moving on to the 2017-18 season, I think that was a season where you not struggled so much. It was towards the bottom half of the table, but. A milestone for you, 100 goals now for the club. I remember, yeah, I played uh, Mark Drayton, got a hat-trick for Atsas. How mad is that, actually? Yeah, yeah that's what I was just that's, thinking, that's, yeah. Uh, got a hat-trick for me, 100. Hat-trick <laughs> for, uh, for me, 150. Yeah, I never even thought of that. Yeah, that, that brilliant, sir. Um, it, was, it was good. I mean, we bought, 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 yeah. like I've just told you earlier. Yeah. In, in that sense, did, did it, as good as it was, did it mean anything? Yeah. No, we lost the game 4-3. Mm. We didn't get no points, so as as happy as people sit there and probably say you were, I wasn't really because we, we lost the game. But yeah, it, um, I know, and I never even realised I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, I thought forgot about it too. But I was listening to a podcast and they always say the striker, you've done your job, so it's then down to the other players. Possibly as well, but then if if just because uh, I scored three goals, does that necessarily mean I've had a good game? I can remember playing for Newcastle Town once actually. Me. Um, I scored five against Stratford, so I'm telling you now I scored five. It sounds like I played brilliantly, but I think I was the worst player on the pitch. So it, it, as much as yeah, goals are important, it's sometimes you, just just by scoring isn't isn't enough. Are you holding the ball up? Are you chasing down players? And you know um, when when you need to, are you helping your teammates out in that end? Because it's all good sitting there saying yeah, but I scored three. But if I'm not, if the ball's coming up to me nine times out of ten and it's going back, then no, you're not, you're not, you're not doing your job. I was one of nine hat tricks for the uh, club you've scored so far. So is that what it is? Nine? Yeah, I think it's nine oh, now. Oh, now you put something on. Now I've got another aim now to get ten. Yeah, now I've got another aim to get ten. Yeah, happy. I just think mm. it's one of them where probably every full season I've had in in terms of playing for this football club from a full season, I've scored a hat trick. Mm. I think as well as uh, that, that that is something that is. Is something that I do aim for as well. At least one one time at, at during the season I get hat trick. Um, so I've managed to do it early this year. <laughs> Hopefully I've got a chance to get another. Uh, there's the, there is there is a possible there is the possibility. Is any any forward like you say there's but there's not many forwards that can sit there and say they scored hat trick every single season they played it. Do you know what I mean? So. I'm happy in that sense, but I've got to get one more now this year. Now you've told me that. <laughs> yeah. that I, I am, I'm telling you now, lads, I am not passing no more. <laughs> not that I did anyway, but I'm not passing now. I'm shooting from everywhere. Yeah. Um, just going back to your time with Leek and the Vale and Newcastle, were you scoring hat tricks then, or is it more? In the youth team, yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah, I scored hat trick for Castle, uh, hat trick for Leek, so yeah, um, I never did one for Kidderminster. You just got have to two, go back there. Got doubles, but never got uh, But yeah, no, but more, more or less, yeah. So yeah, I did, uh, but it, it, it's something to be proud of, uh, mm. it really is, because there's others who, who may never do that, but fortunately I've done it. Yeah, and we're talking about hat-tricks, it's kind of about last season, uh, two seasons ago now, four hat-tricks in one season, three in one month, that is impressive. Yeah, it's, well that's what I'm saying when I'm talking about, that, uh, aiming for hat-trick, I said that season it was the first game against Cleverham, yeah. and after that it, it got the others coming up, but we were on a good spell there, yeah. I, felt, I felt in myself I was playing well, especially mm. that month. Um, that season as well, which I went on a long, long, uh, a long, a long time without scoring. I think I went about 11, 12 games without scoring, which is very, very unlike me. Um, but and then when I when I finally scored a year against um, Bamber Bridge in the cup, yeah. uh, I managed going a little decent running. Yeah, it was in that one month. I think it was first one run called Linnets, then it was Joyles Den, and then I believe it was Scandal United. Scandal, yeah. yes, I remember, yeah. And um, you know, luckily that game against Royals, then you you managed to um, record the goals, which I'll always be thankful for because 
I think it was a, I thought it was a decent hat trick, but my mm. fear goal uh, was something that I've, I've, I can look back on now. Because at this level, mm. you don't really get teams recording, people recording for you. So all the players who, who especially who've, who've been at this club and other clubs have scored so many goals and they never got relive them and see it back. And like, I'm thank, grateful for you that I've got that hat trick to look back on. Yeah, I've just had to put my hand up. That was when they start filming. It was. Uh, Rob Glover and oh, James well, Bat- oh, yeah. Yeah. I was actually did you, have, did you have any input? I did ask him for there a There we go, that's all I'm going to But I told you as media, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, you as media yes, at the end of the day media. because yeah. we, we haven't had that media here before and like say it's little things like, and what's happening now is you're recording, you're seeing games yourself now mm. so uh, people, people, we do, we are grateful for it and so I'm glad you said it wasn't you. Well, I'll say it was you, but we'll say it's, we'll say it was. <laughs> yeah. Screw it, screw it. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be pleased with that. Uh, just going on to that season, the FA Cup run, that was the season we got to Hartlepool. Just, just take us back through your memories of that, because you got the first goal that started that run against Ravensbottom here. Oh, I did, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it was more memorable because of the way we got there in terms mm. of we every game we played, it was a battle. First game against Ramsbottom, we drew a year 1 1, I think, and then we went yeah. into a replay. 0 0, man sent off, one on penalties, backs mm-hmm. against the wall. We go away, second sec, second game, Atherton Colliery, yeah. I believe it was. Top won, won our league that season, the best team in the league. Managed to beat them 3 2, or was it? Something like that, yeah. I think it was 3 2. I missed a penalty that, that day, which we won't talk about. <laughs> but yeah, and then we go again. Managed to get through that, which is a great win, and we get Mosley. Mm. Horrible place to go to. I think me and Desco score, and we win 2 1. Yeah, 2 1. Yeah. And um, backs against the wall. All game backs against the wall. Mm. Then we get another tough to work it to no way. Backs against the wall again. Take them back to our place, losing 1 0. Big scores from the halfway line. They go through last kick of the game and hit the post, I believe. Yeah. Then extra time. We managed to get the win, and then we go to Hartlepool, where I believe it was probably the best we played all the way through, and end up losing, which just shows you how cruel football can be. Yeah. But it was a great time. The journeys on the way back and the change of room. That that was a proper. That season was a, one of the most enjoyable, probably the most in, enjoyable season I've had for a long time because the group that year was was special, and it was a good. It was a good place to be. Kids group was, and I, I, I loved it every week. And we we were we were a close group. Yeah. Just taking you back to that Lewis Spurgeon goal. Does he mean to pass it, or does he get, or has he got it in his eye to get? No, I mean, God, he, no, he has. To be, you've seen it yourself. Yeah. I mean, he must try it hundred times a season all the time. He, he he never gets nowhere near. And he was lucky that that day he got that he got it as well because the keeper just tipped it. But I believe as well. I think you tell yourself he was awful. <laughs> yeah, I think they were just about to sum him up, and then he did that, and he was brilliant. But if there's anybody in the team that can do it, it, it was definitely him. He's he's capable of doing that, but. He does it every week and I'm sick of it to be <laughs> now. He scored it once, mate, so well done. Yeah. And was that the best goal that you haven't that you've seen on the pitch as a player that you haven't scored? No, we that that no disrespect, I apologize on that. No, there's I've seen over me over my career, mate, I've seen a lot a lot of goals and no ways go go back into I mean Joe Lolly scored some special yeah. goals to him. So I've I've seen spe- I mean I've seen Kyle Diskin score some special goals as well. Mm. I remember Reese Thompson's actually against Mosley, which he hit on the off volley, I believe, from near the off. So there's been a lot of good goals at this football club. So not sorry at, at all the football clubs yeah. I've, I've been and seen. So I wouldn't say it, but I think it's one of the most important. Yeah. Was it a regret that you didn't get Kids Grove into that first round proper and everything that it brings? Or we... Yeah, no. At the end of the day, it's an achievement in itself. Mm-hmm. It's not like we got to the fourth round and got knocked out to a team above. A fourth qualified round, mm-hmm. we got knocked, to, knocked out to a team above us or below or, or same level. We got knocked out to Hartlepool, who've been in the football league for, for God knows how long. We were a massive club. So it, it's not a regret. It, we got there. We got the biggest, the biggest club that we could get yeah. during that season in, in, in that game. So... That that was not not a regret whatsoever. No. Yeah. And the club paid paid for you to stay, the whole team to stay over twice before Workington and Hartlepool. How important was it to, to be prepared, right? Yeah, very good because the obviously long journeys aren't. Mm. It was very good. It was just nice. It was just nice just to experience that again because again not many mm. semi pro sides get the opportunity to do it. Mm. Uh, we did. We did it twice, like I say, mm. on that occasion, and and they've you know they've done it for us this season as well against Cambridge, and it, and it does help. You know, mm. instead of travelling up on a day where you're stuck on a coach for so many hours, you actually get a nice 
nice sleep, knowing wake wake up, you're already there. So and, it, and it's important, yeah. But it, it was it was very nice of the club to do that. Yeah, I guess there's nothing worse than being stuck on a coach an hour before kick off. No, I got um, a horrible. I remember actually who was it? Matt Lock last season. Oh, can you remember that? How horrible was that? And an hour journey, end up taking no with like was it only two? Yeah. yeah no, yeah. It's it, it can it, it is horrible. It is horrible. And we started poorly that day as well. Thanks Matt Lock, if I remember rightly. Yeah. We managed to win, but first off, they were they were all over us. Yeah. And then last season, we might as well move on to it. We should start talking about the FA Cup for us. How um, how disappointing was it not to have achieved it, even though you got just you fell slightly short? Not not again. Not not mm. not really disappointing. Mm. We we lost the gate set, yeah. who, who by the way only went down because of mm. their financial troubles, because mm. they were actually in the conference in the playoff spot. So. Mm. There's, there's no shame in that whatsoever. Again, we played really well. We give them a game, and it's not like these games that I'm talking about where we've gone out and disgraced ourselves mm. and we lost four, or five, six. We've lost one nil both yeah. times, and and their manager come out after us and pray, praised us. So it, it, there's no disgrace whatsoever. And as a club, as a whole, we we can look back on that now and we can be proud of ourselves. And they finished in the playoffs as well. Well, there you go. Last then, season, yeah. that shows how good they were. Well, there you go. Then that's what I mean. So yeah, it was a, it was a, it was another good day. Mm. Just talk last season because I mean it did start slowish for the team. It took till end of August to get the first win in all competitions, uh, and for yourself the, the lowest of fifteen goals uh, over the season. Yeah, well, to be fair, it was one of them where I was injured, so for us to to still get fifteen was. Well, at the end of the day, don't, I didn't play properly since January. Uh, just around Christmas, you scored. You had a great run there. Carl turn away, Castle, Castle. Yeah, I remember we were doing Leak here. Yeah. Again it, it was just a frustrating year for myself personally, injury wise. I shouldn't have played the games that I did. I, I tried out for the team. That's my fault, that's not Ryan's, that's not nobody else, that's me being me. Looking back on it, I will never do it again. Mm. Missing one or two games is more important mm. than missing six and seven. Mm. And playing when you're not fully fit doesn't help you. It doesn't help me. It never helped me. But still at the end of the day, the season ended early. We still had what nine, ten games. Yeah, it was always capable if I wasn't coming back fit, scoring, scoring the goals. So, is it a disappointment? Mm. Possibly, but the season never finished. I was never really fit properly since from from January the Balp again. That was the last time I was properly. I got a knee injury and thigh injury in that game, and I never, never really recovered since. So. It was disappointing, but on the get on games wise, I scored I scored a one and two like I probably do every season. So yeah, it's it, it is what yeah. it is. And also as well, with it being a disappointment scoring fit fit fifteen to other people, that's their best season at this mm. like their, and they have a good season. It's I can I can score thirty goals and someone will turn around and someone's you know had a one off season where they've got thirty five thirty six. I've always stayed around that range and mm. without sounding big headed or. I have no matter, no matter what, I'll always score goals and I've always stayed around that, that 30 plus mark and other people, it's their best seasons for myself or oh, he hasn't done very well, I have to accept that, I'm there to be criticised, people just, I think I'm one of the people in Stoke on Trent that everyone looks at to criticise, I really do believe that, everyone loves to hammer me, yeah. I take that as a compliment at the end of the day because... Uh, it's a nice thing because at the end of the day people are still talking people want talking people want to see people fail or they don't they want to see somebody else do better and, I, and I'm fine with that I put myself in that position to be it so but if uh, 15 is a bad season then that's that, I think that bodes well for myself really what type of player I am yeah, and you say it was still about 10 games to go so you could have easily got into 20 and broke the record last season possibly yeah we'll never know because of what happened with Covid but at the end of the day I've done it now we, it, it's done we got it with three points now it's just to look to the future and hopefully we can be sitting here in another venture at the end of the season mm. nothing about my goals it, about us being in the playoffs or winning them so that, that yeah. that's that's the aim now It's uh, the aim is to actually play for a side that is getting playing for something towards the end of the season yeah. and then lockdown happens you must stay at home because the critical thing we must do to stop the disease spreading between households. That is why people will only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purpose. Did you think football was ever going to return? Mm, yeah, I did, I did, but I didn't, I thought, to be honest, I thought everything would be normal now. Yeah. I thought everything would be back to normal. It, and that, that's a frustrating thing as now we, we, like I keep saying, that we don't know when our last game's going to be. Mm. We, yeah. we don't. It's that horrible. Um, 
strange times and also as well it, the frustrating thing is it's taking years off people's careers that mm. people could potentially have lost two seasons of football that they're never going to get back and mm. you know what I mean that's going to affect people's people's like goal scoring ability or because at the end of the day people people legs go the older they get and if it, they were coming towards mm. the end of the career Covid could have potentially done that so it's it's kind of gutty knowing that you don't know if you're going to carry on or not yeah was it ever on the back of your mind that you may never be able to get to the 150? You might have had to change your part and said, now I've had enough of football. Um, good question, good question. I've never really thought of it like that. Probably potentially, yes, but it, it is what it, it, is what it says. It, 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 I always believe once like, once we did start playing again, I get it, it was never, it was never a question where, if it was when. Um, but Again, it, it, I know what you're saying, it's a good question, that is, but I can't really give you a proper answer. Yeah, because it's all hypothetical. Yeah. Then. During lockdown, Ryan goes, Scott comes in. How's that affected yourself? Um, good question. Yeah, good, in, in, in a positive way, I suppose, mm. because obviously I got all the injuries, wasn't as fit. Mm. Then the new manager come in and Scott and told me the way he wants to play and the way what he wants me to do in the end of the day if I'm going to play I've got to play that way I think everyone now who comes knows how hard I'm working I've much, I have lost weight still a big lad but I've lost a hell of a lot of weight compared to what I was last season and I'm and I'm still go and I'm still doing it and I'm still working hard and eventually the rewards will come but it's been a positive move for myself because it's someone different now I'm hearing uh, and different and a different style of football totally whereas Ryan lovely, lovely to play for in terms of wanting to get the ball down and pass and move and suited me this year it's a totally different style of being fitness pressing pressing and pressing and and everything's about running and off the ball and something to got to get used to because i've not not done that since i've been in this football club yeah you broke his records for top goal scorer obviously you got 53 in the season which we touched on before how important was it for you to have him with his records managing you not not important mm. at all and to be honest like what he's done is he's done is brilliant you know fair play to him but that 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 says that's 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 how it is. I'm not I'm not interested one bit in thinking. Oh, I want to beat Scott's record. Not not <laughs> a chance. That Scott's record, Scott's record, and I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> he, he he's got it, and I I don't think it'll be beat. I'm not going to sit here now and tell you that yeah. will not be beaten. Unless this club plays at a lower standard of football, all they bring that that will not be beaten. If I had a chance of doing it at the, of the year where we score forty two, mm. that will not be beaten. Mm. But is is that is that any? Does that take away any what anything else? No, takes nothing away, nothing away whatsoever. Um, but that will not be beaten. That yeah. it won't. But people can come and try. But I probably shouldn't. Know. <laughs> you can ring me up in 15, 20 years time and say, hey Matt, I'd be like, no chance. Mm. Maybe beaten. No. Not a chance. And that brings us full round to the full circle of one hundred and fifty goals. What's the plans for Anthony Marvin going forward for the future? I think we're packing at the end of the season. <laughs> Finally, put my feet up, rest. No, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said to you, in terms of, we don't know what, what this strange time to be involved in anything in life and foot. I think the most important thing now is, it's all. Just be happy. Just be happy with, getting these opportunities to play on a Tuesday night in front of a crowd on a on a decent pitch and. You know, then we see how well our takes us because before you were guaranteed to play. And now we're not. We just have not got a clue. So I don't want to set anything in stone saying do that. Just just be happy and just take every game and play like it's your last. You know, all the, all these motivational methods and all that. But it, it's true. I, you never you know, never thought you'd sit here and say that. But it, just just play each game, enjoy it, and then you know as long as you go home to your you know, missus and kids and be happy and you know you can. You can be happy in your life at work and just round people and not argue and which I've been which I have, I'll be hand up and say some people might think I'm odd or to deal with or to work with, but when you from the outside scene and like I'm a very complex character, I really am. I just always want the best for everybody, so it I seem to moan at them more. But I'll be the first one to, to back to back my teammates, to back my to back my friends, um as much as I'm the first one to to criticise when things aren't doing well or if I don't believe in something, but you know, it, um, from the outside in, I may look look bad, but when you get to know me, you get to spit down and speak to me and say, oh, I really am. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a happy guy. I, like I said, I just said I'll back you all to the mm. end. And it, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be. It's a pleasure to work with the people I work with, and hopefully, hopefully, it'll carry on like that. What about coaching and management? Because those are the hallmarks of what a great manager should be. 
Like he'll criticise when he needs to, but he'll back you to the end Something of the world. Something that um, I'm interested in. I, I, when I spoke to you last time in the mm. COVID, I was like, oh, I'm not so sure. Yeah. But the more and more I've looked the way things are and how it is, it's mm. definitely something that I'm interested in. And not yet, still, still a long time away. But it's something I would love, love to get in, into. Yeah. I'll be 150 goals. What's the best one you scored? I know you, there's loads of pick from. I don't know. I, I really, really do. I've tried to think all day. Um, it's difficult. One of my favourites is definitely the Jules and Cheer. Um, the thing is, there's probably people I need to ask because people probably remember different things or what it is. But I, I, it's hard to choose one. But uh, we'll go for the, that, the chip that Jules did at the moment until I think of another one, then I'll message you. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think that was a good one. I always like the. Uh, I think it was your first one where you pirouetted around the goal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd have, yeah um, I do that to Kieran and train all the time, so it's nothing new. Yeah, and just finally, uh, you played with so many players for kids group. Pick your five side right, team. Right, five side team. Right, is not is based on who I know will be a good five side yeah. team. So <laughs> it's Kieran and Goal. Yeah. Myself, Lewis Bergen, Kingsley, mm. and Disco. Yeah. I think um, who would be my sub. I let, let Jeppo be my sub. Hey, Mozzie. Let Jeppo and Mob be my subs, but uh, Mozzie can want to change the game. Jeppo's just there, just in, just just for a laugh. But I think that five side team will. I'll challenge anyone in Stoke with that five star side team, <laughs> but don't do it yet. <laughs> You'll have to thank you at Grassroots Gossip for a great podcast. I got that idea from that one. That was a great uh, yeah, yeah. podcast you did with How good it's like being involved in like sort of that thing and talk about your career. I know we've just done it quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, it's very good because it's also getting a wider wider audiences, you know, because mm. obviously they have people up and down the country listening to, whereas obviously you you probably tend to get more more Stoke side and all mm. that, but it was very good. It was just, it was just, it was good, good exposure for the football club as well. So yeah, very happy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your time, Anthony. And here's the next one.